For our most recent adventure, we stayed closer to home. We drove up into northern Idaho and drove through Bonners Ferry, which is where we both grew up, and we met up with some family to do some winter camping. We drove up almost to the Canadian border in northern Idaho. Um, it's a place called Good Grief, Idaho, which we joke about being <laughs> wagon trains stopped and said, Good Grief, this is far enough. It looked like absolute winter driving up, but it really wasn't as cold and snowy on the, you know, on the ground where we stayed once we got there. We recently got a Cabela's Alacnac wall tent with optional vestibule, and since we'd never set it up, we also bought um, some portable camp stuff because we had been camping together as a family since the 80s. We started out mostly as hunting camps with lots of wall tents. Then a lot of us migrated over to all campers, and now we have gone back to wall tents. So we set up here on the Moye River with some family that have houses up there, and we just had a good weekend getting together with some of the extended family. We had a nephew who set up his wall tent uh, across from us, and we went a little bit off-grid in the driveway here. But my husband did build a tongue and groove floor. This is the tent as we were setting it up, and it did go up pretty easy. This was our first time with it, and with this new little caboose stove built by Flame Innovations in Post Falls, and it worked out great. This is a little bit of the vestibule looking back into the tent. A little bit of the interior we set it up um, as much of the stuff as we brought that we could fit. It turns out that uh, this space is not as big as we expected. Um, we thought it would be more of a 12 by 12 floor space, but it has three foot sidewalls. So if you're thinking that 10, 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 is all usable space, there's a high peak and um, lots of room there for headspace, but it doesn't equate to a full 10 by 10 usable. And you see this vent up here in the peak there are three of those, and they are they are open to the outside. So I have seen people you know, reviewing these when they do extreme cold weather, that you need to cover those, and there isn't a cover that comes with this tent for those vents. They vent to the outside for airflow, but if you're in extreme cold, you're gonna wanna cover those vents. So we did learn that. Um, it was fairly easy, like I said, the setup, but the, the kitchen, this is at night, unfortunately, but the kitchen setup I bought um, we only used about a third of it. That was all that would fit inside here. So that would have to be set up outside in the future if we want to set up the full outdoor kitchen. For reference though, we spent uh, two nights, two or three nights up here. We had temps as low as 27 degrees and this little stove it kept us completely warm for the whole time. We had a friend, uh, Tony Ford, who is a welder, who built us this awesome stand under it and a back plate. So it kept the heat off that wall you know, and kind of reflected it back towards the tent. But here are some of the temperatures that we were dealing with. And I did bring a little thermometer so we could check and see what the interior temps were. This was in the morning after the door had been opened quite a bit, lots of people in and out. But this handy little thermometer has buttons you can push that will give you the range of temps. So our prior day when we set up, the coldest temp as we were getting the fireplace going showed 52 degrees and the highest temp was 69 which was plenty warm and you're in a big, you know, zero degree sleeping bag. So we slept perfectly comfortably. Although again, if you're in temps lower than 27 Fahrenheit at night, you would want to cover those vents. All, there's three of them and you would definitely want to cover those because I wouldn't want to be colder than 60, you know, 68 degrees at night for sleeping. And this is the view of the Moye River, which was about uh, 100 feet from where we camped. And the next morning I thought I would do a walkthrough. Um, it's pretty brief because we were enjoying ourselves, so I didn't do a full review, but here you can see the bit of the kitchen that we set up. And it worked fine for a couple of nights. We had room to cook. Um, we made some nice meals. We brought some freeze-dried food and we were able to boil water right on the stove. Really like about this tent, the uh, these windows. It has quite a few big windows and they are really great because they're triple layer. So you can unzip the interior piece and you get light in, but the outer screen is also covered by a clear outer cover. So you keep that heat in and stay warm, but you are getting light like a window. Or if it's warm, you can go out and unzip the outer clear cover, roll it up, and then you just have that screen for some airflow. And you can see the floor worked out pretty well. We do have a few things we're gonna change if we use a, a tongue and groove floor on our next trip because um, some of the stability under it we need to get some more support going but you can see the walls on the side here pretty low we had the cot set up there and there's what you have for headspace there so we were a little surprised at the the lowness of the you know if you're sitting at the table that right side of that table you're going to be hunched down a little bit here's 61 we were still at a fairly low degree we have a lot of little storage pockets around this and a fold down little um, cup holder that was nice to put your your flashlight and your cup could go in there 
you can see again these upper vents that you would definitely want to patch something over those open vents to keep some of that extra heat in if you were staying in here in the winter but all in all this was a great little stay we were perfectly comfortable um, we had 61 and this was after the windows were open and the doors were open we did take a road trip because we're from the area so we decided to take our kids and drive them around the valley so we went this is the Kootenai Valley we headed back down and went across the upper part of the Kootenai Valley at Copeland we stopped at a little scenic outlook and read all these signs which of course you never stop at these so we finally stopped and read the signs and it was interesting to read a little bit of the historic information that pertains to the Canadian and US border and some of the development there we continued on through the valley um, we're at the northern end of the Kootenai Valley here so we took the kids and drove down and across the valley since my husband grew up in the northern part of this valley and he worked for farmers in the area so we were able to go down through cut across at Copeland and out across the valley floor and went past some of the places where he actually worked as a kid so we drove across the Kootenai River which is beautiful it comes down from Canada through Bonners Ferry and back up and we continued on down the west side of the valley, which is actually just called the west side. <laughs> Came back up, made a loop through Bonners Ferry, and I actually grew up way out there at the back of that end of the valley out towards Montana. Hit the three mile store and corner where you will see the lone biker of the apocalypse if you zoom in. <laughs> and then back through Good Grief, which is population three. I qualify for the old grouch. And then back to camp. And we spent a really lovely visit here with family, so we kind of didn't go a huge amount of review time into the tent. I thought I would, and I ended up just having a vacation instead. But I hope you enjoyed this quick peek at our Alaknak wall tent weekend in fairly winter conditions, but not lots of snow, of course. And a little bit of the Kootenai Valley and the beautiful area around Good Grief and Bonners Ferry, Idaho. If you enjoyed this content and you'd like to see more of our travels and travel tips, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.